something that perhaps might be giving you real headaches when it comes to academic writing is how to appropriately organize your thesis or your paper. That's why in this video I wanted to go through the necessary sections or chapters if you're writing a thesis that you definitely must include regardless of the field that you're in. So let's get started. So even if your English is already very, very good, you're not going to write a good thesis or a paper without the necessary structure and organization. And by understanding which sections or chapters every thesis or every paper needs to contain, you'll also be better able to structure your thoughts and write that thesis or paper much more quickly because you will have a framework that you can follow and refer to. So the first section of a paper or a thesis is always the introduction. In the introduction you want to provide us some background and some context and explain the importance of the study. That would usually be the first element. And then you also definitely need to present the gap, the research gap, and also state the aim. That would be the last section of your introduction. Afterwards, you're going to move on to the literature review. Now, a quick side note here. Sometimes the literature review will be just one section and sometimes it can be two separate sections. This really depends on the field that you're in or on the preferences of a particular journal or your supervisor. And no way is better or worse than the other. They are just simply different. So always check in that uh, journal you're writing for or in your department what you should do, whether they should be two separate sections, literature review and introduction, or should they be together. Now, it is also possible to divide your literature review into separate chapters. So you might find that some people, for example, have two, three, or maybe even four shorter literature review chapters. That's perfectly possible as well. Or you might have one bigger chapter with all of the literature reviewed. Now, once you review the literature, we're getting into the methodology section. In the methodology section, you basically need to tell us how your study was conducted. In other words, you need to tell us step by step what you did in your study. I'm emphasizing the past tense because this section will be written in the past tense. What are some of the typical elements in a methodology section? Well, first of all, you need to tell us who or what you studied. In other words, you need to present the sample or the materials that you have studied in your study. Then you need to also present the research tools, so kind of the things that you used um, in order to conduct your study. And you also need to present the research procedures, so the sort of step-by-step -step how your study was conducted. And also you probably need to give us um, a presentation of how you analyzed your data. Once you've presented the methodology, we're getting into the results and discussion. Similarly to introduction and literature review, there can be two separate sections. So first you've got a results chapter or section, and then you've got discussion chapter or section, or they can be together as results and discussion. And this really depends. No one is better than the other. They're just different ways of doing exactly the same thing. Now, when it comes to results, you basically need to clearly present what results you obtained. So you might need to use figures or tables, especially if you're doing more quantitative studies. If you're doing something that's more qualitative, then you need to present as extracts from um, what the participants said. So you need to present us the exact words of the participants to show us what results you're obtaining. Now, when it comes to discussing those results, First of all, you want to compare your results with those obtained in previous studies. So you want to show similarities and then show differences between yours and previous uh, results. The second thing that you really need to do is um, 
explain and interpret your results. So you basically want to tell us what you think these results mean. What do they suggest? What do they imply? What practical implications they have? And so on. That's done in the discussion section. And finally, the last section would be the conclusion section. Sometimes, not very often, but sometimes in papers, conclusion and discussion would be put together. So you want to check if in your field this is done as well. But in the conclusion section, you basically need to restate the main aim, you need to restate the main results and the main sort of takeaway from your paper. You need to highlight the main result of your paper. And then if your paper has practical implications, then definitely state them here and also point out the limitations of your study. Now, this is really, really important because you need to show us that you're being critical of your own work and you understand that your own work also has limitations, which then lead us obviously to suggestions for future research. And this is very often the last paragraph in the conclusion. So to wrap up, the necessary elements that you need to include in your paper or thesis are introduction, literature review, methodology, results, discussion and conclusion. As I said, some of these elements can go together or separately. This really depends on the field. But if you follow this framework, you will write your paper or thesis much more quickly and it will also be much easier to follow. It will be organized much more coherently. If you enjoyed this video and you want to start improving your academic writing now, then join my Instant Better Academic Writing Challenge, where in just 10 minutes a day for the next five days, you can really improve your academic writing. And the link is right below this video.